So it's a, if you can see the title, it's a pretty long title, you know, The Whole Systems Approach to Integrating Crop and Livestock Production to Enhance the Soil Health and Profitability of Cropping and Livestock Systems and Other Plains. So that's kind of a mouthful, but you'll see what all that means, is because it's kind of a, a, a like I said, a, a, you know, a holistic project looking at a number of different factors. Um, so basically some of the keys to the project are, you know, as we're looking at, you know, the cropping system and the soil health effects on that, you know, how, how, the, how the cover crops and, and, and whether there's cover crops or not cover crops are, whether it's grazed or not grazed, and how that has effect on the, on the soil health. And then also too, how the livestock systems and how that affects the beef health, you know, in terms of meat quality and other things to see if there's any effect. So we're kind of looking at, again, looking at a broad, broad picture here. And the, and the economics that tie all this together. Um, economics in terms of was those cover crops profitable? Was the gain from the beef uh, uh, profitable? Um, and really, and then the social implications. And we often wonder what that is, but you know, it's, it's very important. But really, that's really to bridge the segregated enterprises into a complete system. Whether the, and that means basically whether the person has livestock or doesn't have livestock, whether the, this, the, the farmer does not have livestock and use integrates uh, a rancher or brings on livestock from another another uh, component and to see what effect that will have because I think uh, there is a lot of uh, a lot of room to be for people to use cover crops that don't have livestock to where livestock can be moved on to this and that's kind of what we're looking at too to see what some of the economics of that is so basically we're looking at two different crops in this study it's corn and wheat cash crops and then again, these crops would be looked at with and without covers and with and without grazing. And in doing that, then, we're going to compare the cash crop performance um, with the inclusion of cover crops and our livestock and see how that, how that impacts that. And what are, how are the soil characteristics changing? We, uh, we saw that in the uh, last presentation of, of how that can have an impact. And, and, and how are these soil characteristics characteristics changing as a result of having um, livestock or covers. And then another uh, question that we're looking at that seems to come up a lot often is when we're grazing um, our livestock on, on cover crops and cash ground is do the do the livestock uh, cause compaction? And um, so we were kind of looking at a unique way to answer that question and we'll show that in a little bit here. So the other component obviously besides the, uh, the the, the cash crops and the cover crops are the livestock. And then so the questions that we want to look at in a short, shorter growing season area, such as North Dakota, once we take our crops off, particularly with corn, is you know how long can we expect to graze these livestock um, on, 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 on the cover crops after the cash crops? So obviously a year like this had a big effect on that with a later year, the wheat coming off later, you know, we you weren't able to graze as much or get that cover crop seeded. And also corn, um, because corn, as we, as you all well saw, much, there's a lot of corn left in the state, so some of that, you know, uh, didn't even have the capability to be able to, to graze because the corn was not harvested. And then we'll also look at, you know, basically the livestock that are going to graze on this are weaned cows, um, and we're going to look at it also then compare um, a set of calves that are on the cover crops to can see how they're doing in the dry lot, because basically at the research center where we work. Um, our, our livestock operation is all uh, confined to dry lot. Um, and so we want to compare to see how they're doing on that. So that's a unique approach to that. And then also, too, to look at how is, how is beef quality affected by these two systems, uh, you know, grazing versus being in, in, the, uh, in the dry lot system. Economic analysis is obviously another component. And here we want to be able to co compare, you know, the farmer's performance with without covers and livestock, and then also then compare the ranchers' performance with with grazing, and again to look at that economic component of whether they have livestock or livestock or custom grazed on that. And then again, you know, compare an integrated system versus not an integrated system. 
And so again, the, the, the question to ask is, what is that value of the livestock to the cash crop producer that does not have, um, that does not have, you know, livestock to graze that cover crop? And then also the effects of that soil and, and, and also the soil health and nutrients. So uh, another component is we're just not doing work at the research center. You know, there are uh, farmers involved, farmers and ranchers involved in this out too. And so basically we have three farmer cooperators in East Central North Dakota at Gray City, Lemoore, and McCluskey. And they will incorporate covers into grain or silage corn and graze them. An outreach component is they'll do field tours in, in, uh, on site in, in, in the fall for each of the two years of the project. And their overall question is, you know, the feedback is, what is their satisfaction? Satisfaction is the system. How did they like it? Did it work for them? And, uh, questions to be answered. So we're looking at the research component and also the, the farmer uh, component too, which is important. And then another outreach would be um, kind of tailoring off to some work that Abby Wick has been doing is doing some of the uh, existing uh, cafe talks to visit with informally with producers. It, as we've, this has been noted as a very effective method of getting um, uh, people in, in, in their uh, setting um, with low numbers, meaning, you know, uh, not large 50 people meetings, but where, where people are more willing to interact with, with, with the researchers and, and, and with the farmers, which I think is a very important, very important tool, that exchange of information. I think we all learn a lot by that. And then also we will host uh, tours at the research center, that's the Carrington Research Extension Center, um, for two years. And then we'll use social media along with traditional um, reporting methods such as our annual report and um, other factors <coughs> to report on this outreach. So here's a slide showing where we um, we, we used our, we we just used an old 71 flex platter and, uh, you know, offset the rows, changed them a little bit. And then this is where we're seeding our, our cover crops into the corn at that, that uh, B5, V6 stage. And, and, and there are some of, the, some of the cover crops. We did have, um, particularly uh, once we got into to June, July, we started getting some, some timely rains and then started getting quite a bit of rain. So had success in establishing the cover crops, as you can see. And here, uh, the cover crops are, are uh, barley and rye, lentils, turnips, and radishes. You know, and seeded in, in these, as you can look there, they're seeded in, in different row spacings there. And that's, that's in the corn. Um, I don't believe, yeah, we'll just go back there. I, in, in the wheat then, um, so this was, this was interseeded during, while the crop was growing. In the wheat, we seeded the cover crop after the wheat came off. And, uh, and obviously a factor was there because of the, the cooler year and a lot less heat units, our wheat, our wheat crop was later. And then with, the, with a lot of the rains, it got off quite late. And so then therefore, again, the factor that's always hard with, with trying to seed a cover crop after you take your other crop off, we really are looking at limited growth. And so obviously there are many different ways and novel ways to try to look at seeding our cover crop and getting them established. In this case with corn, we have to do it while we're seeding, you know, um, while the plant is growing because we just don't have enough time. But that is always uh, obviously a big factor in trying to establish cover crops in our, in our cash crops. So we're using pre precision ag to measure one, uh, uh, to try to measure the soil compaction. And if you see here, this is, this is a slide showing the implement. It was basically a, uh, it, it was the, uh, uh, oh, I'm not quite sure what it's called, but it, it, it's hooked onto the drawbar of the tractor and it measures the drag pulling the implement. And that's, that's the tool that we're trying to use to measure, measure that, the soil compaction. You can kind of see the, the tracks and, and stuff here that, uh, that's measured. And if you look at the colors, it's basically the engine load is how it's trying to measure that. So again, uh, this is uh, after the wheat crop come off. And obviously, the early October blizzard um, had a big impact on grazing that. So you can see the cover crop is growing there. Um, and I think that this, as I look down the bottom, this slide was taken October 9th, right before the, um, right before the blizzard came. But again, because there was not a lot of time to get the cover crop grown, we had limited growth. And I 
think this is going to show you what it looked like as a time lapse thing. So yeah, this you know came pretty pretty neat. <laughs> um, and so then this is on October 11th uh, when as you can see the time going by either fast is that there's quite a bit of snow into the 12th, 13th. Um, oh, we're starting to melt though a little bit. Because uh, after we got that snow, it is amazing how fast the, the snow melted. So you can see there that by October 15th, the, the snow was, was gone on that, on that. Now, interestingly enough, too, when it's once it's a little warmer, when you do have a little bit of green plants there, it's amazing how that heat and how that, that will make a difference on measuring that snow. We see that quite often with, with the cut crops. Okay, so then grazing. Now, I did look at this earlier, and this also says it's a time lapse. I don't know if it's going to work. But what we did do was we were able to graze uh, the cover crop on the wheat. And you can see we, you know, we put up a portable tank and we used an electric, uh, electric fence wire there. And again, these were weed calves. But again, just to illustrate the, the fact that we, we were able to get some grazing uh, on the wheat. With the corn, there was no growth. There was no poor growth, no opportunity. And obviously, too, we didn't get the corn off. But with the wheat, we were able to graze from um, the 12th of November to the 25th, uh, 13 days, close to two weeks. And again, because of that, because of that limited growth of the, of, of the cover crops, that also gave us a limited grazing window. But we did, did do some uh, measurements of the uh, performance of those livestock out there, and then compared them to the dry lot. So if we, if we look at the uh, grazing on the wheat in those days, uh, 13 days, we got 1.69 pounds gain per day. In comparison to the the dry lot, you know, there was almost, uh, well, it was a little more than double, so 3.9, and I, I know that's usually what they get uh, uh, on there. And again, I'm a livestock person, so excuse me, but um, just showing you that they're, you know, the, the basically adding those livestock to, the, to that land and that, you know, cover crop, uh, you know, we were able to still get some gain and have some effect on the soil. Um, but obviously not the gains that we're seeing in the dry lab. You're asking a lot in 13 days, so. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And basically, what we we didn't have much, you know, time there, but it was basically just to be able to to get them out there and raise it to help work on the study. And that's a real thing. I mean, obviously, this is a factor that we, we you know happens a lot in the in the north. Uh, further north like we are compared to you know other areas that have more heat and longer growing seasons is that we are going to have limited windows so novel approaches are to be very important um, to, to being able to utilize uh, livestock with cover crops and obviously on, on winters when we don't get a lot of snow it won't work much better but um, with increased moisture and cool weather yeah it, it was a tough scenario but it's real life and so we're experiencing the same things that, that farmers did So really, what have we learned so far? Well, in, in, on the farmers' fields, uh, basically they were flying on rye, and basically that was a failure. It was almost 0% establishment success in, in three tries in the farmers' fields. So in, in this case, uh, aerial seeding rye in, into the corn didn't work. And again, you know, a corn cover crop raising is risky business in North Dakota due to weather. And that's not only due to the snow coming in, but uh, obviously maturities of our corn. You know, depending upon you know when we get that corn off is also going to determine when we can start getting our, our animals out there. So, um, in areas in winters when we have less snow, it'll be much much uh, better. But uh, but again, it, it can be risky. And so one of the things that Mike and some other researchers are going to look at here not related to, the, not in this project, but you know, sidelines to it is, they're gonna start looking at 60 inch corn. As you may, many people have probably started hearing about the 60 inch corn is getting to be a pretty Why do they jump to 60 inch corn right away? Well, the, the basic principle, the majority of what- More sunlight, I know. More sunlight and to be able to use, uh, integrate cover crops into it. The main right, but I mean, if you're, you, if you're doing a 30 inch and you're still integrating cover crop and grazing, you're, I mean, why 60? Do well, it's, it's basically to open that up to get a lot more light for that. And so, 
some of the just the preliminary results that I've, I've had looked at and stuff, it basically showed that they're not taking a big reduction on corn yields. What, what, what a lot of the people are doing is they are putting the same number of plants in that one row. So in other words, if you're doing, if you're seeding 30,000 in, in, in 30 inch rows, they're putting 60,000 in that. So they're using, most of the people are using the same number of plants giving that wider area than where, you know, the cover crops, uh, some of the numbers I've seen, they're pretty high biomass. And so it's, it's, it's really to complement the system, to integrate the system of, of crops and livestock, and to try to make that concept of grazing and corn, you know, work better. And it's, I mean, a lot of the, I, I think the concept is pretty young, and, and, and um, you know, a lot of people are looking at it, and so it's, it's going to differ by where you're at. And one of the, the reasons um, um, Mike and Kelly Cooper at Oaks didn't get some funding for this, and I think Mike was visiting with me and said that he's, they're going to look at a few different things like roll arrangement, things like that, directions and stuff like that. But I think what he stated was this, that this was probably the, this will be some of the further, uh, first studies that are done this far north on the 60-inch roll. So, I think that's important to see. Will that concept work the further north we go more and stuff too? You know, but it, but it is interesting. I know the first when I first started hearing about, it, I thought that seemed kind of seemed kind of odd. But it, you know, particularly when we want it, the idea of integrating cover crops or possibly even some intercropping or multiple cropping. Are you evaluating any other correlations to like factors of weather or like grazing density? Um, I don't believe that's in it. Grazing density isn't real high because the paddocks that we have aren't, aren't that big. Um, I don't believe that's being looked at, but I can't answer that 100% with confidence. I, I have a question about the compaction too. I thought that it was basically like a grazing density of like 